I have noticed that I have way more knowledge of this work than I can practically apply. This head full of knowledge, more than anything, feeds my imagination, pride, and vanity. How can I make this knowledge work for me rather than against me? I think this is an interesting question for a number of reasons. One, because clearly the person who's asking this question has already begun to use the knowledge to work for them. They've already begun to apply it. They have already seen that knowledge puffs up, that knowledge generates and feeds pride and vanity and imagination. So clearly already they're using their knowledge to observe themselves. You have to have some knowledge. And it's a matter of what you do with the knowledge. What this person is saying, I have more knowledge of this work than I can practically apply. That's not really true. You could practically apply more. You don't really have that much knowledge of this work, mainly because this work isn't really about knowledge. The knowledge is about what leads you to the actual work. Work is the ability to do. The knowledge gives you some direction on how to do. Right now, in life, we can do in an ordinary sense. We can go out and unlock our cars or lock our cars and get in our cars and drive away. And we can drive pretty much to where we think we want to drive. If nothing gets in the way, if another car doesn't get in the way, if weather doesn't get in the way, if a roadblock doesn't get in the way, if some situation doesn't get in the way, if we happen to remember where we were going, if all those things line up, which I admit is a lot of ifs, but if all of those things line up, we could end up where we set out to go at about the time that we set out to be there. People think, oh, well, of course, anybody can do that. Well, no, actually, anybody can't. How many people do you think are late to work every morning of their lives? Huge amount of people. And every one of those people has an excuse for why they're late. Not one of those people is late because it's their fault, because they're responsible. It's always someone else or something else made them that way. Traffic, their husband, wife, son, daughter, what, mother, father, whatever. But there's always something that keeps us from ever acknowledging the fact that we can't do, that we can't really do what we set out to do. We've got all these excuses instead. So this person is saying, I've noticed I've got more knowledge than I'm applying. That's really what you're saying. I've noticed that I have way more knowledge of this work than I can practically apply is not correct. You can apply a little bit more. Not a lot more, but a little bit more. And that is progress, applying a little bit more. So what does that really mean? Does it mean we actually apply more knowledge or do we apply the knowledge that we have more? And what I think it needs to mean is, how can I apply the knowledge that I have more? There are two ways to deal with this system. One way is to get all the knowledge that you can get and apply whatever's easiest. And when you run out of easy stuff to apply, then get some more knowledge, take the easiest of that and apply that. And keep moving the hard stuff to the back burner. That's the way 99.9% .9 of the people that I have ever met in this world will apply it. That's the way they'll do it. They'll keep doing the easiest and the easiest and the easiest, and then they'll want more. And they'll want more, and they'll want more. Does this sound familiar? Okay, I can tell by the look on your face that this sounds woefully familiar. So you're really into applying the knowledge of beating yourself up about this one. Is that right? Yeah. I, I want to really crucify myself over this. Oh, I'm a horrible person. So this is exactly what this work says not to do. This person who's doing this knows that we're not supposed to be criticizing what we observe in ourselves. We see something about ourselves. We're not supposed to be criticizing it, condemning it, judging it. We're just supposed to be observing it. Wow, look at that. That really wants to go that way. It really likes to go down into negative emotions about that. But since the work says, don't express negative emotions, I'm not going with those eyes. I don't know who those eyes are, but that's not I. I'm not going. That is the application of the knowledge. Now, it's true. There are a lot of ideas involved in that, what I just said. The idea that we're not one, so we have many eyes. The idea that we're not supposed to express negative emotions. The idea that we're supposed to observe ourselves, observe those many eyes. The idea that we're supposed to observe ourselves without being critical. So there are four ideas right there, four points of knowledge right there, that what I just did is I applied four points of knowledge in one situation. That's what you have to do. It's not, I have, all, I have more knowledge than I can apply. It's, I have more knowledge than I am applying. 
But that's because it's harder to apply it than it is to gather it. If it was hard to gather it and easy to apply it, everyone would be applying it and nobody would be gathering it. And then we'd actually run out of knowledge because we would have applied all the knowledge that we had and there wouldn't be any more. But that's not the way it is. The head full of knowledge, more than anything, feeds my imagination, pride and vanity. How do you know that? How do you know that? That seems such, that seems such a bold statement to me. The head, this head full of knowledge, more than anything. Do you know what that means? More than anything? Like anything in the whole universe? Anything in the whole world? Do you see how formatory that is? It's way over here. It's just this, it's this absolute statement, more than anything. If you'd like to apply some knowledge to that, what I would do is I would apply to that. Well, isn't that interesting? It likes to make these bold, absolute statements. I wonder what I that is that's talking. So that would be applying the knowledge to that. How can I m make this knowledge work for me rather than against me? That's how. How you can make it work for you is to see that there is no for you and against you. There is no you. There's just this fragmented concept of you. There's this Im image of you, this imagination of you that needs to be observed. And as you observe it without identifying, without throwing yourself, yourself, your sense of yourself into every single idea, thought, feeling that arises, without throwing yourself into every single thing, just simply observe it and continue to observe it and remind yourself that you're here to observe it. You're not here to judge it. You're not here to feel good about it or bad about it. You're just here to observe it. That's all. If you'll just remind yourself of that and continually do that, as often as you can remember to do that, you will make this knowledge work for you rather than against you.